Right, a big game on Thursday night then. Real Betis versus Celtic in Seville, a city that is quite well known to Celtic fans. We're really looking forward to this game. Well, David, I certainly was before we got some big news earlier today. That certainly put a little bit of a dampener on how much we're, we're looking forward to it. Um, we have got David on the, the channel. We've also got a Betis expert, Enrique Roldan, who is the founder and member of Betis Bohemio. Enrique, great to have you on the channel. Um, you were actually in Glasgow at Celtic Park last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. First of all, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity of being here and speaking in the name of Betis and, of course, in the name of Betis Bohemio. And uh, yeah, I was in Celtic Park last week. I I want I always wanted to visit Scotland, but it, it was a trip that I have been delaying a little bit. And then after so much time of uh, isolation and everything, uh, we found a cheap flight and we couldn't resist. And uh, and we went there. And uh, yeah, I, I went. I, I spent some days around in Edinburgh, uh, the Highlands, and then I finally went to Glasgow. Actually, I went to Glasgow just because I wanted to visit Celtic Park. <laughs> I also visited the city, but I just wanted to go to, to the stadium. And yeah, and I really like it. I really like it. And I, I hope I can go again in, in December and see my team playing against yours. You didn't visit any other stadiums in Glasgow while you were there? just about to say I... There is no point in visiting uh, Rangers, so don't worry. Oh, I visited... Uh, I visited Easter Road, the, the um, Hibernian uh, Stadium in uh, Edinburgh, but no, no need of visiting Rangers Stadium. Don't worry. You're just obsessed with the coloured green, aren't you? Yes, I am. I love every team uh, that uh, wears these colours, and you know, for us, uh, Beticos, we have a, a very good, a, a not good relation, but a, a deep relation with uh, Celtic, just because of the colours. I don't know if people know it. Most of the Celtic fans know it, but. Uh, in our first years, we used to wear a blue shirt and uh, just because of one of our founders, he was studying in Glasgow, he discovered Celtic and he came back with a t-shirt, uh, with a Celtic shirt. That's why we changed our color. So that's why all Beticos have this uh, feeling uh, about Celtic and that's why we're so looking forward to playing uh, with, with you. Yeah, Betis are the good guys in Seville, David, in case you yes, know, we are. Hence, why, hence why I'm wearing the... <laughs> the Betty store. I really need to take this off because we're playing them in like 24 hours and I'm wearing the rival shirts. Um, we'll come back to you in a second, Enrique, but David, the, the thoughts on the news today. Callum McGregor out with a knock. Lee Labada out for religious reasons. Uh, Yom Kippur, which I believe is the holiest day in the year of Judaism. And yes, I have been on Wikipedia for that. James Forrest, Greg Taylor, Georgius Jakimakis also out, but the amazing news, Anthony Ralston is back. Aye. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really not ideal, Hamish. It's, it's, it's a game I've been really looking forward to since the group stages were, were released and, and this was announced as our first game. I really thought it was a great opportunity for us. Um, with all due respect to Betis, they're a very good side. But the fact we were away from home for our first game, I thought, what a chance to get a good start in the groups. These injuries are a massive blow for us, massive. They're hitting all of the key positions where we're lacking cover. Um, you know, if you look on the right side, I don't know what Ange Postacoglu does there on Thursday night. You know, he's got James Forrest out, he's got Leela Bad out. That's our only right wing options at the moment. The only thing I can think of to solve that issue is maybe to play Josip Juranovic slightly further forward. But I'm wondering whether he'll change the shape. He's not really done that much during his time at Celtic. He's stuck to a very uh, uh, sort of one formation, I would say, in every match. He's really tried to put his own stamp um, in every game so far. So it'll be interesting to see whether he changes his shape, whether the manager changes his, his approach to the game. It doesn't sound like he will, judging by his press conference this afternoon. Um, what well, I'll ask Enrique, we've been hearing ever since our manager came in that Celtic like to play a, a very attacking game and he likes to force his style of football on any opposition. Home or away, he'll attack the opposition. What can we expect from Real Betis on Thursday night, especially considering if Celtic are going to try and attack them? Betis, for the last, let's say, three, four years, uh, have always tried to have the possession. So you can expect that. Uh, we don't care. I mean, our coach Pellegrini and before Ruby and Kike Setien, 
uh, they didn't care about the team that was uh, in front of us. Uh, it's always the same idea. Uh, if we have the ball, the other team doesn't have it, so we are not in danger. So you can be sure that it, it doesn't matter which tactic your, your coach will choose. Uh, we will try to have the ball and we will try to attack all the time. Even though if we are winning, that, that's a, main, a, a small problem that we, we have suffered many times. For example, it comes to my mind, three years ago, we were in a semi-final of Spanish Cup. We were winning 2-0 and uh, we didn't defend. And at the end, we got a draw and we end up uh, uh, losing the, the qualification. And here, this year is the same. It is true that we are better organized uh, in defense, thanks to, to the work of uh, Pellegrini. But yeah, you, you can expect that for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, David. We know how Celtic are going to play. We know that Ange is, is going to go, um, you know, for the jugular. But that news, I think it's disastrous. I, I really do. I, I know in this channel, we always we always have to try and, you know, put a positive spin in things. But I, I don't think you can sugarcoat it. Going into this game with the full Celtic squad sitting there, I think you would look at our four key players in the match being Callum McGregor, um, Kyogo, Leela Bada and Joe Hart probably, and three of them are are not going to play tomorrow night, and I, I just think it makes it makes a result very very difficult. Um, I'm not going to tell people what to think about the game tomorrow night, um, but I would suggest to set your expectation bar quite low because I think it's going to be very difficult. I mean, when you look at when we went to Altmar, for example. The only way we got joy there was by exploiting them via Abada and Kyogo. It was using that pace and using that movement in the final third to get ahead of them. I don't think you get that with a jetty in the final third. I don't think he plays anywhere near the same way as Furuhashi. And whoever, whoever Postacoglu tries to play on the right side won't offer you what Abada does, even if it is Juranovic. So the, the way in which we were trying to hurt AZ Alkmaar in the playoff round... We can't utilise that against Betis. That's now out the window for me because we just don't have the players to do it now. So I'm not going to say disastrous. I'm still looking forward to the game. I'm still looking forward to seeing how the manager tries to solve this this injury crisis we've, we've just suddenly caught out of nowhere, it seems. Um, and hopefully hopefully can come up with a solution. It'll be a good test of, of how we can adapt. But for me, it, it really highlights the, the lack of depth in the squad. I think we saw it on Saturday when we saw the bench against Ross County. It was impressive, Hamish. Um, and that was, with, that was with maybe, what, two or three injuries? Two or three, uh, two, two or three players on that yeah. bench that will probably start tomorrow night. The, the bench tomorrow night's going so to be. So what's the bench tomorrow night going to be, yeah. exactly? Um, don't even know if we'll be able to fill it. There'll be a few You'll young boys, I think. I know, maybe we're a bit of luck, eh? Um but it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough game. I still hope we're competitive. I still hope we take the game to them if we can. But it's going to be tough, no doubt about it. Enrique, how are Betis feel, feeling at the moment ahead of this match? Uh, well, let me tell you that you guys have a very bad luck because uh, yesterday we, we won a game that was very important for us because it changed our mind at all. I mean, uh, we tied the first two games and then we lost against Real Madrid. So it was like two points in three games. And But, you know, the feeling was good. It was like we didn't uh, get any um, as much goals as, as we wanted, but the, the feeling was good. And uh, on Monday, we played a really good game, I think. I mean, we can improve, of course. It's only the, the fourth uh, game of the season. But uh, we improved a lot. And we finally won. The defence worked very well. So maybe if we had played this game like we, one week before, the, the thing would be quite different. But uh, after yesterday, um, I mean, after two days ago game, I think the mentality of the team has changed and especially the, the mentality of the supporters. Uh, I th I'm pretty sure that everything will be uh, cheering and screaming like crazy during, during the game and that will also help the, the players. So I think we are better. I think we are better. We have only uh, nine, five points out of 12. But as I said, the feeling has changed and... Um, and I don't know, and, and I'm really sorry for you if you lose, guys, but uh, I think, actually, I was a bit scared after your words. I feel a bit more relaxed. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it will be a very hard game. And for us, Celtic is the most difficult uh, team uh, of the group. 
Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that it will be a very hard game. But lucky for us, we are in a in a better shape right now, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what's happened. Well, I must admit, Hamish, I, I never really bought in to the narrative that Real Betis were, were, were struggling because they didn't win a couple of games. I mean, if you actually look at the chances they've created in those matches, they've had some some massive opportunities to put the games away. Even against Granada, I know they only won two one. That could have been that could have been four or five. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to you before Alkmaar, we were having a similar discussion about them. And we were saying, well, they're not scoring many goals. They've struggled early on. And OK, we put Alkmaar out, but don't tell me they didn't create some big, big chances against us. So I, I was always wary of saying Betis haven't won in three games. So oh, maybe we can exploit that. that. That was nonsense. Look at the league they're performing in for a start. It's one of the toughest leagues in Europe. It's only been two or three games. They've got a really experienced manager. They've got a settled squad as well. I don't think you lost many players over the summer, Enrique, did you? I think the squad is quite settled. I think maybe Emerson Royal was the only big big departure. Yes, uh, we, as, as you said, we only uh, sold Emerson. But any, anyway, it was something that we knew because uh, Emerson was supposed to be here for two years and then he was going to Barcelona although he finally uh, ended up in uh, Tottenham. Um, but yeah, we haven't uh, lost an important key player. We were very scared about uh, Guido Rodriguez. Uh, Guido Rodriguez for us is the, the key of the, um, of the center of the midfield uh, because he's a, a defensive player who helps the, the, our defense a lot. And if you think about it, one of our main problems has been the, the defense. And with the help of, of Guido Rodriguez, uh, last day against uh, Granada, we could see it. Um, uh, the team improved a lot. So we were a bit scared with Guido Rodriguez and maybe, you know, Nabil Fekir is always there on, um, on, on the side of some teams. But uh, yeah, we haven't lost important players and I think we have signed good players which improve what, uh, what we have, what we had before. So, um, but anyway, I think it was necessary. We are, we are going to play three, uh, the league, the Europe League and, uh, and the Spanish Cup. So, during the um, during the market season or, or whatever during the pre-season, we were a bit scared because all the players that we needed were not coming. But at the end, you know, with Bellerin from Arsenal, William Jose from uh, from Real Sociedad, Petzela who came from uh, Fiorentina and he even won the the American Cup. I think we have improved a lot every of our of our line, so we are quite happy. Of course, we can always do it better. We were this close to sign um, Ceballos from from Real Madrid, but um, William Carvalho didn't want to leave. So at the end, we keep it. We kept it. But anyway, William Carvalho played a very good game against Granada. So you never know. But uh, yeah, we are happy. We are happy with the with the team that we have this year. Enrique, when when you look at the the fact you played on Monday night. Um, you know, I think 72 hours, less than 72 hours before the game against Celtic and the fact you play on Sunday night against Espanyol at home. How how important is this match to Betis and to Manuel Pellegrini? Is he going to play a full-strength team on Thursday night? I'm pretty sure of that. Actually, if you check our 11 players that, that played against Granada, uh, four of them... Uh, were players that will normally be at the bench, uh, so he was uh, he was saving the good ones for the game uh, against Celtic, and also because oh, uh, Betis fans, yeah, um, Betis fans are very very excited about this game. Uh, we are excited about our return to Europe League, and as I said, uh, like I said before, we are playing against Celtic, which is a, like a very important team for for us. So yeah, you can be pretty sure that we will work, we will play with all our good players. What are the fans' thoughts towards Pellegrini and the job he's done since coming to the club uh, at the start of last season? I think you will not find any Betis fan or any Betis supporter who doesn't like Pellegrini, um, especially after what he did last year. You know, when, when we signed Pellegrini, um, especially at the press, the, Span the civilian press, they were saying all the time that Pellegrini was an old guy. He... he you know, they thought that his time had already passed, but what he did last year with the team he had, it, it wasn't the best team uh, that Betis had had in, in some years. It was quite worse than previous years, but what he managed to do, he, he, he got to, uh, to qualify our team for Europe League. So 
all Betis fans are crazy about him. We, we always say that the best thing that Betis has is right now is uh, Pellegrini. So now that we think that with this uh, improved team that we have this year, if Pellegrini has enough time to, to work, he can do great things. Always uh, being aware that we have to play three competitions and that it will be very hard. But yeah, we cannot be more happy. We cannot be happier than we are with uh, Pellegrini. Yeah, David, it almost reminds me of when we played Zen at St. Petersburg a few years ago uh, and they had Roberto Mancini as their manager. And, you know, it's a manager who did okay in England at the same club, actually, Manchester City, um, mm -hmm. but probably isn't quite as favoured, you know, by the English media. But someone like Pellegrini is, is still a really good manager. He's very reputable, you know. He's, he's managed at some big clubs, you know. You look at his past... Like sort of, um, I think it was Real Madrid manager, wasn't he, for a point as well? Villarreal. Yeah, Villarreal too. I think Ange Postecoglou's already said that he admires him greatly. Um, it's just, but no matter who the manager was, this was always going to be a tough game. Celtic going to Spain, Celtic going to Real Betis, a top six La Liga club. I think when Pellegrini came in, Enrique, I think you finished 15th the season beforehand. Was it 15th in La Liga? He's taken them yes. up to top six. That's absolutely fantastic. And he's got, as we said, a settled squad and it's packed with some quality. The Betis fans love him. They're in a great place as a football club by the looks of it. And it's going to be a, a really, really tough ask. So can't wait. But yeah, it's going to be probably, probably our hardest game of the season, Hamish. I can wait, by the way. I'm happy to wait because I'm really not looking forward to it at all. Um, <laughs> Enrique, you mentioned Guido Rodriguez. Uh, what, what other players uh, are the, the star men, the key players for Betis? Of course, Canales is one of them. And actually, he scored, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you have seen it, the second goal against Granada, it was amazing. He, he took the ball at, this, uh, at the midfield and he just ran and ran and ran and finally scored a goal in the eight, minute uh, 89. And uh, he's great. He's a great player. Uh, also, um, Borja Iglesias, the striker, he, he's not scoring at all, but he's such a player who... who works a lot. He makes um, uh, the football for the other players, for their partner. He, he, make it, uh, he makes it uh, way easier. Um, where else? Now we have a young player who scored the first goals against the uh, last day against Granada, Rodri. Uh, he's 20 years old or something like that. He, he just came from, from our second, second team and he's, he's turning to be great. Um, where else? In, uh, also, the keeper, we have signed um, Ruiz Silva from uh, Granada, who is also a, a great keeper. And of course, if I have to choose someone in the defense, that would be Petzela, Germán Petzela, the, the Argentinian guy. Um, he was in Betis like four years ago, then he was sold to Fiorentina. And now he, he has come back as a, a different, completely different player, uh, way more mature, uh, helping the others. And uh, yeah, I think that would be, oh, of course, I was forgetting Fekir, but you know, Fekir is, is all with her. But I think those are the, the key players in all, the, in all our, our lines. Yeah, Fekir was a, a big money signing, former Leon player. Um, I was actually quite surprised when he went to Betis a couple of years yeah. ago because there was a lot of... You know, people saying he could maybe go to England to a, a you know a big big club in England or, or a Barcelona Actually, I think or a Real Madrid. He, he was going to to Liverpool, but there was something wrong with uh, his knee. Actually, he said that he didn't have any problem with the knee. That it was, uh, um, I don't know how to say, the, his lawyer or whatever. He got angry with him, so he tried to to destroy the the signing with Liverpool. But thanks God, I will always appreciate what that lawyer or whatever he was did because he eventually ended in in Betis. But yeah, we we couldn't believe it either. We Betis fans, we couldn't believe that he was signing for Betis. And also the goalkeepers are quite interesting. You mentioned Rui Silva, who was getting some hard a bit of a hard time from the Granada fans on Monday night because he's a former Granada player. And two other goalkeepers who people will probably know, Joe Robles, who was Everton, I think, for a long time, um, and even more so Claudio Bravo. Um, I could be mistaken here, David, but was Claudio Bravo not the goalkeeper it who was. Pep I think I know what you're put thinking. ahead of Joe Hart? So, I yeah. mean, if, if those two play... 
on Thursday night, it could be very interesting. And I think Claudio Bravo has also played against Celtic before because I yep, think he picked was the ball in his net team. three times. Yeah, that's right. I don't think he made a save that night. So, yeah, um, surprised. I didn't know he was there, Hamish. I didn't know that. And I didn't know Fakir. I didn't even know Fakir was at Betis before the group was drawn either. Those are those are surprising acquisitions for me. I didn't know that. And it just it just shows just shows the quality they have in some of the some of the big name players they've got in their squad. Mark Bartra, another one. He's Bartra, already played yeah, Celtic Barcelona, in his career. He? And, and yeah, he got injured Celtic. last week. Actually, he was right. playing from the beginning, uh, from the beginning, but he got injured, and that and Pesela had to play. You know, we were saving Pesela for you guys, but uh, he had to play a little bit. Is, is, is Mark Bartra definitely out on Thursday? Is he definitely injured? I don't know. I don't really know. Uh, every time he gets injured, he loses like ten games. So I would bet that he's out, but I, I'm not pretty sure. Yeah, we have a few players like that. Eh? The other one was uh, Christian Teo, who's played against Celtic in the past, I think, for Barcelona. I remember him having a really good game at Celtic Park once. So they've got a lot of good players. I think we know that by now, but so would the Celtic. Um, sadly, a lot of ours won't yeah, be playing just tomorrow injured, night. Yeah. Um, but maybe for the return game, I think match day six in Glasgow, and um, we should have, well, all of them back, hopefully, for that one. Um What's the situation like for fans in Seville at the moment, Enrique? Um, how many fans will be at the match tomorrow night? So, yeah, we have a 60% capacity and, um, you know, it's not 100%. We are looking forward to, to it, but it will be pretty, pretty crowded. And um, the good thing is that here in Sevilla, uh, when we get the club card, um, you, you can choose if you want to go only to the league games or, all, or also league and Europe League. So everyone who chose the league and Europe League, and Europe league is allowed to go. So it won't happen like in other games that uh, there were people who even having paid, they couldn't go to, to the stadium. So everyone who paid for the Europe League will be there. And there is people who haven't been able to go to the first games and now they can come to this one. So imagine those, no? they, they, Betty has been playing for one month and a half or something like that. They haven't been able to go to the stadium and now they're going finally and against uh, Celtic in, in Europe League. So everyone is very excited about it. Um, as, like I said, the 60% uh, will be there. And let me tell you that today I found five Celtic uh, fans wandering around Sevilla. Um, Two of them, I saw them in the morning. I was going to, to my job and I was driving my car. They were walking and I say, come on Celtic. They did like this with the, with the fist. And uh, I also I also saw three guys uh, walking around our stadium like uh, two years ago, two, sorry, two hours ago. So I don't know if they will be able to, to get into the stadium or whatever, but there will be some Celtic fans here as well. They'll find a way. They'll find a way to get into the stadium. I'm, I'm confident of that. Um, mm -hmm. Enrique, weaknesses in the Betis team? Are there any that Celtic can exploit tomorrow? Uh, the defence, of course. The thing is that for the first three games, we have had uh, many troubles uh, at the defence. We only improved them in the last game. So, yeah, we don't know if we, if we got lucky or maybe that we have improved, uh, definitely improved. But, uh, yeah, we have uh, we get nervous a little bit uh, when the defences are, are playing the game. I, I think that's our weakest point and what uh, Celtic has uh, have to do, have to, to attack and press or whatever if they want to score a goal. That's more encouraging. Um, right, apologies Enrique, me and David are going to chat about Celtic's team now. You're you're more than willing to, to chip in with any thoughts you have. Um, for me, David, just briefly, I've been thinking about this for about an hour earlier, um, so God knows how Ange is feeling looking at this team because, as you said earlier, right wing is a huge problem um, and whatever way you look there doesn't seem to be an obvious solution that doesn't leave someone out of position or a part of the team unbalanced for the record this is a team i i would probably go with um so joe hart and goals a back four of ralston carter vickers starfelt and uranovic at left back James McCarthy in midfield, although I am worried that Soro might be picked ahead of him. Uh, Turnbull and Rogic. Jota on the right. Montgomery on the left. And a Yeti up front. Um, the other thing I was thinking, possibly Owen Moffat 
Um, it would be a huge deal to throw him into this game, I know, but he would give us an option on the left that could maybe mean um, you know the team was a bit better balanced. Uh, I also, I think, I've just heard that Mikey Johnson, I think, has been spotted today. Again, I can't see him being thrown in at all tomorrow, but it's another one worth mentioning. Um, what do you think? Um, I think Adam Montgomery will play, but I think he'll play a left back. Um, I don't think Juranovic will be pushed back out there. I have a feeling, just just a small feeling that Juranovic will be um, ahead of Ralston on the right flank. I mean, there's no perfect solution. You know, people might hear that and go, well, that's not where Juranovic is used to play. And he, he actually has some experience of it in the past with, with Hajduk Splits. So, he can do it, I think. Um, it's not ideal, but I think he'll go with that. Um, I would pick the same midfield as yourself, Hamish. I would I would definitely have McCarthy in if he could start. If there are still concerns over his fitness levels, then I'm sorry, you probably have to put Sorrow in because there's there's no alternative again. Gives um, me the fear that a midfield of Sorrow, he's, he's, Turnbull and Rogic gives me the fear against Betis. Rogic, if there was any way not to start him, I would do that, <laughs> but I think he has to start again, just simply through the option, just simply down the options. I've I've really seen Tom Rogic have a, a an accomplished away performance in Europe, Hamish. So I would have been a bit wary of that, but I think he probably has to play. Um, just down the necessity, I'd have Jota on the left where he's comfortable. Um, I'd probably have I'd probably have Rogic playing in that sort of number ten position. Um, maybe David Turnbull pulled back a little bit. It's, it's tough. It's, he's going to have to find a solution. I certainly don't don't have a perfect one in my head, but um, with regards to Owen Moffat, far too soon. Um, I don't think he's going to get thrown into a match like this. But I do I do have a feeling Montgomery will start at left back. He was so so impressive, and Alkmaar, you know, he dealt with that occasion incredibly well, and and in a hostile atmosphere too. He's so, good at Brooks as well when he came yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Actually, he was he was getting forward too. He was making himself an attacking threat. Something I think uh, Postecoglou will like about him. So, yeah, I think that's what I would do. I think I would push Juranovic further forward and I'd put Montgomery left left back. But his needs must, Hamish, it really is. It's, um, it's a massive blow, this this injury flurry we've had. It's, it's not ideal at all. Enrique, have you got any suggestions for how Celtic can... Fix their Actually, injury problem. I was just taking notes so I could call Pellegrini <laughs> and uh, tell him some details about the game. <laughs> oh, how, how are you feeling then? Is it going to be a, an easy win for Betis, do you think? No, I don't think so. Uh, like I said before, for us, it's the, the toughest game of the of the group, of the group sorry. And um, I won't think it'd be, I don't think it will be easy, uh, especially in, in Europe League. Sorry for those teams, but unless you play with a team from the former soviet uh, from a country uh, from the former soviet union it, it, it's always hard you know and even there it's hard because of the cold and, uh, and everything so i don't think it will be a, an easy game and I, actually i don't really know what will happen because even though you are talking about the player your players that are not game that are not game the, how important our players are at the end we are tired because of the monday's game and we also have another one on sunday and then we also um, uh, we have a, a, a game in the middle of the week uh, next week then also sunday then fed and barrow so at the end it is like we have uh, seven games in 21 uh, days so it, it won't be impossible to win all of them so i don't know i don't know it will be a hard game and uh, we'll see we have um we have confidence in our team but we are also afraid of the team that we have uh, in front of us just to pull you up on what you just said, do you think Celtic then are a harder game than Bayer Leverkusen? Yeah, of course it is. Football is um, is way more than in eleven players. So I think that playing in Celtic Bar with all the fans uh, pushing, uh, it must be way harder than playing for Leverkusen, which is a team that in the last year is not the same, and is the their supporters have uh, no the same strength that the strength that they used to have before at the end i think that celtic is a combination of of many things that uh, make for me and for most of the beticos the most difficult team in uh, in the group actually if you ask to most of beticos they will tell you that the first one in qualify will be will probably be celtic glasgow and then we will fight for the second or the third position so 
I hope I'm. Um, I mean, I, I hope to be grown and to to to. No, I hope. I, I hope you're. I hope you're spot on. I, I hope, I hope that today. we both uh, qualify and we find again each other at the final because I don't know if you guys know it, but the final Sevilla. is held here in Sevilla. You know, in the stadium of the other team of the city in a neighborhood that we never want to go. But it could be great if we both could qualify and find again at the final of the Europe League. Well, six games, six games in the group, Hamish. It's not, it's not a lot of matches, you know. If one or two of us, if both of us could get a result against Leverkusen, it puts them in a bit of trouble. So, you know, just because they've, they have got the best quality out of everyone in the group, you know, six games, it's not a lot of, it's not a lot of room for error there. So, mm-hmm. who knows what'll happen? And don't, don't rely on Ferenc Faris either after what they did to us um, last season. I think Ferenc Baros uh, is a tough team if you play there in the Grupama Arena, uh, which is a lovely stadium by, the, stadium, by the way, I went there two years ago. But I think it will be the, the easiest uh, game when, when they play in our team or in, uh, in our stadium or in Celtic Park. Must be hard there also because of the supporters, what, what I was telling, you know, the, the environment of, of the game. But yeah, yeah they, are, they are the weakest team. There is no, there is no doubt about that. David, um, tomorrow night, We've probably sounded quite defeatist on this. Um, we, we genuinely don't mean to anyone who's watching this thinking, why are they setting Celtic up for a big defeat tomorrow night? Mm-hmm. Um, I I just personally think that, you know, when, when you look at the teams we've had to, to pick there, the fact that we're missing Abada, Kyogo and McGregor, who are our three probably best and most key outfielders, and we're going to such a tough, tough place to play, I, I just think it's going to be extremely difficult to get any sort of result um, but I'm still going to back Celtic to get a result. I'm going to say that we're going to get a draw. How do you feel, David? Look, it, it's not unrealistic what we are saying here about Celtic going to bet us. Um, we're not, we're not dreaming of of winning two, three, nothing. You know, we're, we're being realistic about how this match is going to go in the circumstances. I just want to see us be in this in this match. I just want to see us be competitive, Hamish. I don't want what want us to pitch up in Seville and, and embarrass ourselves. I really don't. Because we've had a few games like that in Spain over the years. I'd like us to go there and and start rebuilding our reputation in some of these bigger European countries. And even if we do lose the game, I hope we don't. I hope we manage to land a few punches, you know. I hope we create some opportunities and we show a good side of Celtic and what this Celtic team is capable of on its day. You're, you're asking me for a prediction... I mean, I, I think I'll um, I'll be optimistic then. I'll I'll, I'll see a draw as well. Um, I'll always back them to try and get a, a good result. But uh, it's going to be so so tough. I think people underestimate how tough this game is is going to be just because Betis struggled in their first two or three La Liga games. It's going to be really hard, and it's it's not it's not a job. I think we should be telling Postecoglou he should be winning. Because it's a it's such a difficult game, so for me, I'll, I'll hopefully we can get a draw. But if we're competitive and we create some opportunities, then then I'll be happy with those signs as well. Great stuff, um, Enrique. Are you looking to come to Glasgow in in December? Yes, actually, uh, I'm I'm planning to go, and also with uh, my the partner, my partner in in Betis Bohemio. We will be there, and actually, I think we are allowed to go like three thousand uh, supporters, and I think we will go. The, the three thousand uh, seats for us will be will be occupied, and I'm pretty sure that even more people will go. I know people that um, has already booked the flights, and they don't care if they don't get a ticket, or even if we are not allowed to go to the stadium, as as happened with you guys, uh, and they just. They will just go in order to, to be around and, and drink uh, and, and, and celebrate. So, yeah, I, I will be there. Betis Bohemia will be there. And a, a small part of Sevilla will be there in, in Glasgow. That's going to be amazing. Last game of the group stage. Hopefully we're both through at that <laughs> stage and we can just enjoy ourselves. Um, yeah. But if, if you're in Glasgow, we'd love to have you on the, the channel again. We'll, we'll maybe meet That's up awesome. and, and record a video in person. Um, it's been amazing to have you on, Enrique. I've really enjoyed it. Um, people can follow Betty's Bohemio on Twitter. That's at Betty's Bohemio. You can see it there. Um, and yeah, brilliant to have you on, Enrique. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much.